Have you ever missed a shot like this that you thought you had aimed perfectly? Or have you ever rattled a ball in a pocket like this? And do you know how the aim required for a stun shot is different than the aim required for a follow or draw shot? If you want to learn more about this stuff and be more effective aiming shots of different speeds and spins, then this video is for you. Here's the ball setup that is used for most examples in this video. The cue ball and object ball positions are marked with donuts for a long half ball hit shot. The ideal line of center's ghost ball position is also marked. A golf tee is on the rail along the ideal required line of aim through the cue ball and ghost ball positions. A quarter ball hit shot is also marked for use during the video. An elephant practice ball is used as the object ball with the stripe aligned vertically and pointing to the pocket so you can clearly see any spin transferred to the ball. The stripe, donuts, and golf tee all help with ensuring an accurate and consistent aim throughout the video. When you hit an object ball with a cut angle, sideways friction between the balls throws the object ball off the expected line of center's direction. This is called Cut Induced Throw, or CIT. Throw is maximum with a slow speed stun shot with no top or bottom spin. Here, I am aiming at the tee through the center of the ideal ghost ball position, but the object ball gets thrown way off line. If you need to pocket this ball cleanly because you are playing on a table with tight pockets or because there are obstacle balls you need to clear, you need to aim to overcut the shot to compensate for throw. Here's an example game situation where a soft stun shot like this might be required, where I need to hold for a shot at the 8, although soft draw would be good here also. Did you notice that I did not compensate enough for throw with this shot? That might not have gone on a table with tight pockets, and I might have hit the side pocket point, which would have caused a miss on any table. Let's go back to the slow speed stun shot. Throw is less with faster speed. Although, faster speed reduces the effective size of the pocket, so you need to be more accurate with your aim at faster speed, or the ball can rattle out. At slower speed, there is more throw, but the pocket plays much bigger. Although, if the throw is large enough, or if the aim is off a little, the pocket might not accept the ball even at slow speed. Again, if you aim to compensate for throw, you can split the pocket. An alternative is to use gearing outside spin where there will be absolutely no throw, but you need to be good at adjusting your aim for cue ball deflection that comes with using side spin. Did you notice how the stripe remained vertical? That's because there was no throw and no side spin was imparted to the object ball. With straight stun with no side spin, there is throw and spin transfer causing the object ball stripe to wobble. Look how much the stripe wobbles with a soft stun shot where the throw and imparted spin are large. More information and demonstrations dealing with all these topics can be found via the links in the video description. Cling, also known as skid or kick, is an excessive amount of throw caused by a chalk mark at the cue ball object ball contact point. People often mistake a normal amount of throw as cling. Here's a normal amount of throw for a slow stun half ball hit shot. Here I am purposely placing a chalk mark on the object ball to demonstrate cling. With a chalk mark at the contact point, the amount of throw is much larger. Throw is largest with cling on a thin cut like this. Did you see how much the stripe wobbled? With large throw comes large spin transfer. Now returning to clean balls with no chalk marks. Again, to be accurate, you need to aim to overcut the shot. Here you can clearly see the overcut hit but the ball gets thrown straight to the heart of the pocket. 
You can also use gearing outside spin to eliminate throw, allowing for an ideal ghost ball aim. Again, notice the lack of stripe wobble. With top or bottom spin, you don't need to compensate the aim as much because the spin reduces the amount of throw. Here's a slow roll shot, showing a typical amount of throw for this type of shot. With a similar speed bottom spin shot, the throw is slightly larger because some of the backspin wears off on the way to the object ball. Remember, throw is greater the closer you are to stun. However, with a faster speed bottom spin shot, throw is much less. Here, the ball is easily pocketed with an ideal ghost ball aim, with no correction for throw. Did you see how little the stripe wobbled and how cleanly the ball went into the pocket? I like using more speed and bottom spin on shots like this just for this reason. Throw is also small with fast speed top spin shots. Again, here is a soft stun shot for comparison where throw is maximum. One reason slower topspin shots tend to throw more than bottom spin shots is because a slight amount of masse spin gets transferred to the object ball, which makes it curve a little. This is called object ball swerve, or OBS. The effect can be demonstrated more clearly with a slow, thin cut shot with cling, where the amount of throw and transferred masse spin are largest. With all the following shots, there is a chalk mark at the cue ball object ball contact point. With slow topspin, the amount of throw is huge. One reason is that throw is greatest at slower speed. The other reason is object ball swerve. With a topspin shot, the curve is in the throw direction, increasing the apparent throw. The curve and increase in throw happens very quickly, almost immediately, so it is difficult to see, but it is totally clear in the comparison with the bottom spin results. With a bottom spin shot, the curve is in the opposite direction, which decreases the apparent amount of throw. As with normal throw, the amount of throw with cling decreases with faster speed for both topspin and bottom spin. A topspin shot throws more than a bottom spin shot, especially if there is cling with a thin cut. With clean balls and no chalk marks, the amount of throw is much less and the difference between top spin and bottom spin throw is small, but there is still a difference. Here are slow and fast top spin shots, and slow and fast bottom spin shots. Again, a top spin shot throws more than a bottom spin shot, even without cling. Here are the important and useful messages from this video. To be accurate, you need to aim to overcut shots to compensate for throw. With slower speed, you need to adjust your aim more, especially for stun shots where throw is maximum. You can use gearing outside spin to eliminate throw and cling. Top and bottom spin reduce throw, especially with faster speed, requiring less or no aim adjustment. The least amount of throw occurs with a fast backspin shot. Cling can be quite large with a slow roll shot. To reduce the chances for cling, keep the cue ball as clean as possible, wiping off chalk marks every chance you get, with ball in hand and before each break. And don't use chalks that stick to the cue ball too much. If you want more information and advice concerning how to adjust your aim for throw and cue ball deflection, see the links in the video description. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.